Locker room x-rayed for an arm or shoulder. And now Hasty making his first Pro Bowl in his 10th year. This uh, wily veteran cornerback from Washington State. James Hasty, number 40. He's filling in the hole as Griffin comes up. Hasty. He came up limping, but it, it looks like he might have just hit somebody with his leg. Second down, seven. Davis breaks some tackles, fights his way out to the 11. Looks to be just shy of a first down. Anthony Davis, the young linebacker from Utah, made the stop. We talked to, to Terrell yesterday, Terrell Davis, and asked him about his running style. He makes one cut, and then he goes, watch this. One move to the outside, back inside, and he's running. And we asked him, have you changed in all this time? He just smiled and said, no. Well, that's right, he can't, because he's not allowed to. <laughs> the coaches out there, to. Alex Gibbs, the running, or the offensive line coaches, and kind of in charge of this running game. When you're running back for the Broncos, you're allowed just one cut, no more. <laughs> Timeout called by Kansas City. Third and one for Denver when we come back with 10 minutes. We can join NBC 330 Eastern on Saturday. A look back at two of the big stories in golf in 97. Davis loves PGA championship victory and Europe's stunning win in the Ryder Cup. PGA of America year in review. And then at 430, you won't want to miss the PGA Tour Q School on the brink. Rare glimpse of nail-biting, sometimes heart-wrenching quest to join the PGA Tour. It starts at 330 next Saturday. Third and one. Running right into a wall is Griffith. No gain, and Kansas City is held. Pelham McDaniels celebrating. Um, third and one. Well, third and one, the Kansas City defense wants the line of scrimmage. They win the battle up front. They said today we are going to attack, and so far in the first half, they have done that. That's the big reason why they're stopping the Broncos' offense. Tom rolling to punt. Denver's rushing game, 12 carries, 23 yards, less than two yards per rush. Total contrast to last week. Rowan sends a wobbler out. Vanover lets it bounce and then takes it at the 50 and tackled at the 48. A flag is down. 40-yard punt, two-yard return if. A legal man downfield. Let's see if Kansas City uh, wants Denver to punt it again. With this kind of field position, I don't know why you would want him to punt again. Because Ruin got a bad punt off. I mean, you've got excellent field position. You just take the ball. Greg Minuski, the special teams captain, hearing a jury Mark Bright's options. Now, Mark by coming to the sideline. He's, he's going to go ahead, Marty. Marty. Yeah, yeah. Right. And they can punt it again. Well, an eligible man downfield, number 31, on the kick. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Derek Lovell. Lovell is, is up uh, right in the middle. He's the up blocker, and he can't leave until the ball is kicked. You see the ball being dropped. He's already gone. He gives yourself away when you're ahead of your teammates. Well, I think the reason Paul Marty must want him to repunt this ball because he has so much faith in his return man, Vanover. They press those outside men of Denver, does Kansas City. Ruin. Oh, that kick, kick off the side of his foot to the 30-yard line. So a gain of 18 yards for Kansas City by making Ruin punt a second time. Only 25 yards for Ruin. You know, there's only one thing a punter does when you're back in, in the end zone, and your job is to keep your eye on the ball and make the best kick you can. Look at Ruin. First of all, he's got the ball too close to his body. He had no extension at all. Thinking about, watch, look, look at his arms. Look where the ball is. Up against his body when he hits it. The ball just goes off the side of his foot. And Denver fortunate they didn't pick up a holding penalty in the end zone. That would have been a safety. Kansas City's best field position in this scoreless game. Gerbach eludes the rush. Good runner. Makes a tackle 
That's what creates the hole for Elvis Gerback to run in. And one thing that people forget about Elvis Gerback, six foot five, he does run very well. Rich Gannon said to Paul Hackett, the offensive coordinator, after the first mini camp, he says, What did you think about the mini camp? Uh, Paul Hackett's asking Rich Gannon, he says, Boy, Elvis throws, throws the ball and runs the ball a lot better than I expected. Marcus Allen hit by Neil Smith at the line of scrimmage, tried to spin away, and Allen Aldridge tackles him for a loss. In trying to make something out of the negative, Allen loses even more, five yards on the play. Paul Hackett, the offensive coordinator for Marty Schottenheimer's Chiefs, there he is. After the playoffs, he goes to Southern California, the university, that is, as the head coach of the Trojans. Coached at Pittsburgh, University of Pittsburgh, prior to coming here to Kansas City. Second and 15 for Gerbach. Pressure up the middle, gets the throw away complete. And it's Allen at the 18-yard line, tackled by Steve Atwater. Picked up the five they lost in the previous play, plus uh, a couple. Well, this is what Elvis Gerbach does so well, being a big, tall quarterback and what he brings that Rich Gannon can't do, the blitz inside, nobody picks up Mobley, but Elvis Gerback able to stand in there, and he can throw the ball down the field a lot easier than Rich Gannon can. That's one of the reasons why they had no doubt when the decision comes up, who's the quarterback? Marty Schottenheimer says, my job to get the best 11 on the field, Elvis Gerback is one of those guys. Perfect seven for seven. Only 40 yards out of those seven completions. Reed pumps and throws it away. There's no doubt about his intent there, nothing about the 10th row. The other thing about Elvis Gerbeck, though, what I really liked was in the interview with him when he said, who should Marty, Marty start? He said, me. I mean, he has the confidence. He knows he is the starting quarterback. There is no, absolutely no quarterback controversy in Kansas City. None. Paul, oh, that's right. You, you come around, you spend a couple days. If there was a controversy, you'd know one of the players or coach would go, I think we should be going with the other guy. You, they do that. We did not hear that one single time. Not even from the players. 34-yard field goal attempt by Stojanovic. And he drills it. And Kansas City takes the lead. But a flag comes down. And Denver signaling, we were held. And that is the call of Jerry Markwright. Holding number 51, offense. 10-yard penalty, fourth down. Greg Minuski, the special teams captain, guilty of the foul. Here's Minuski. Now, his job is to inside first and then go back outside. But, you know, that is, that, please, that is not holding. That is a terrible call. So now a 44-yard attempt by Stojanovic, who was the hero in this direction. 54 yards to win that crucial game a month and a half ago. He's got plenty of leg. Hits the upright, no good. So three points taken away on Minuski's holding call. And then Stojanovic, who missed only one all year, had the best percentage of anyone in the league, 26 for 27, kisses the upright. Well, you're absolutely right about this thing. And, you know, we, we talked to him the other, yesterday. What he told us is this. He said, if the hold is right and the ball is right, I should make the kick. I blame that on him. It remains no score. Flag down. Well, a penalty, somewhat of a phantom call. <laughs> cost uh, the Chiefs a field goal. Face mask fall. This is a face mask. 56 defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat. First down. Simmons acquired the start of the year from Green Bay for a number five draft pick. A little piece of the face mask as Elway goes down. So that's why everybody, everybody booed, because you can't tackle the quarterback if he leans forward. Now, if Elway is sliding, you have to try to avoid him, which is the face mask call. First down and five at the 40. Shannon Sharp resets right. Davis. He 
Davis continues to do a great job against the running game. Gain of three for Davis. Tackled by Davis. Anthony, number 50 of Kansas City. Not related. Terrell, of course, from the University of Georgia after starting, playing the first two years at Cal State Long Beach for George Allen. And then when Long Beach dropped their football program, he migrated to Georgia. Second and two. his way to midfield and a first down. Well, the Broncos are doing a smart thing. Wayne Simmons, number 56 of the Kansas City Chiefs, he is the run-stopping linebacker. He plays over the tight end. Most teams run the tight end. Here's Wayne Simmons. Look, Shannon Sharp says, I don't like dealing with you. I'm going to go to the other side, get a smaller linebacker on me, and the Denver Broncos, now they got a better matchup, run to the right side. Davis now with 24 yards rushing in the first half. Approaching five minutes left in this second quarter. Over down the middle, complete to Carswell, and the big tight end rumbles inside the 25, fumbles the ball, picked up, still loose. And now the Chiefs have it, ruled dead, but their flags all over the field. 26-yard play if, and Marty has it called a legal motion. It's against Kansas City. Marty was wrong. Looked at that one with his heart, but coaches are willing to do that. <laughs> the guys in the striped shirts kind of disagreed, Dick. We had offside, number 92, defense, penalties declined, first down. Well, Dan Williams guilty of offside and a big play for Denver. Well, what's how the Denver Broncos, what happens here? Shannon Sharp comes down, going down the line field and Dwayne Carswell inside safety back deep. John Elway has his pick to which receiver he wants to throw to. Anytime there's just one safety in the middle, it leaves those inside seams open. John Elway knew that. Mike Shanahan knew that. Good call. The longest catch of his career for Dwayne Carswell in his fourth year out of Liberty. He had only 12 all season. The toss to Davis. Trying to make the corner and able to Get to the 20-yard line, a gain of four. I'll tell you what, you know, you, you're, you're a guy, Eddie McCaffrey, the guy you played ball with one time, he's an excellent blocker. You said that a long time ago. Watch what he does to Derek Thomas. He's going to come in motion. Here comes Derek Thomas up the field. McCaffrey just gets a little piece of the shoulder. That's all he has to do, just to, just to knock him off a little bit. He does that, and outside goes Terrell Davis. Mike Shanahan says he's the best blocking wide receiver I've ever seen. And come on, Eddie McCaffrey gets... Thomas, he does the right thing. Stay away from him again. <laughs> Second and six. Davis fumbles the ball and falls on it. That's the second Terrell Davis fumble of this first half. Terrell He's Davis recovered both and loses a yard on the play. You know why Shanahan is smiling? Because the hole was there. He could see the hole from the sideline. Terrell Davis could see the hole. He just didn't get the ball. The, the, when you take a look to Terrell Davis's right side, take a look at this. He does not get the ball here. The ball bounces off his forearm, doesn't get it in, but he is looking at the hole. He already saw the hole. Look outside. All there is is Carter. Maybe that flat jacket, there's a little more of Terrell Davis today on the handoff, and Elway misgaging on the handoff. Third and seven, Elway complete and wide open is Rod Smith, and Smith is on his way inside the five and marked out of bounds, I believe, at the four. Well, this is why you get in a shotgun formation. This is why quarterbacks, John Elway in the back, behind the center, look at the brick, people come free. Nobody picks up Donnie Edwards, the linebacker. It enables John Elway, because he's in the shotgun, to have that extra second to pick up Rod Smith coming across the formation on the blitz. I'll tell you, if Shannon Sharp gets a block on McMillan, it's a touchdown. He just doesn't block anybody. 17-yard play, first and goal at the four. This is where Denver had its problems in the earlier game in Kansas City. Terrell Davis fighting to the goal line with second effort and stopped just shy of a touchdown inside the one. What a good decision by Terrell Davis. It looks like he's going to go outside, but he's a hard inside runner. When you're down here, it's always, most of the time, it's a bad decision to bounce it out. 
Looks like he's going to that. No. Cuts it back in. Runs hard. Wow. Gets down to the one. You know, that's what I call continuous effort. Here's a guy, you know, if you say second effort or whatever, it's almost like you stop. But it's a continuous effort by him. Last touchdown rushing against this Kansas City defense was in November of 96. Leonard Russell of the Chargers. Second and goal. A foot away. And they're going to let the clock run down to the two-minute warning, and that'll give Mike Shanahan and uh, the offensive brain press a chance to figure it out. Still no score. The goal line. Red zone offense for Denver against Kansas City. Not that great. Only two touchdowns. Eight tries. Second and goal. struck first and that military salute celebration of Terrell Davis and his teammates you know when you go on the road and you play in these type of environments hostile environment the one thing for the visiting team that gives you a chance to win these kind of type of football games can you run the football the Denver Broncos the one thing they can do every single game this year just about maybe exception for one they can run the football. Yeah, they They've got an offensive line that's terrific. Jason Elam's try for point. And Denver leads 7-0. A 65-yard drive and eight plays with Terrell Davis running game coming alive. He scored 15 touchdowns regular year, rushing touchdown in Kansas City. Three years for Denver picking this man 196th in the draft. He was the 21st running back selected in 95, and he's produced nothing but top performance, and he's a leader of the team in his own quiet way. Well, you know, Phil, you and I were talking about him a few, about a month and a half ago, about are they running him too much? Does he carry the ball too many times? And, and when you really talk about it, Mike Shanahan said, no. The Terrell Davis said, no. You know why? I didn't carry the ball in college. I didn't do anything. This is so, when I, right. my first chances to carry the ball when I got to the pros. Finishing second to Barry Sanders for the rushing title the last two years. Elam kicks it off. Dangerous to Marek Vanover, who was so key in the Kansas City win a month and a half ago. Dangerous return man. It's almost the ball. It's loose. And Denver, then Kansas City, and I believe Vanover may have to recovered it himself. It was in the arms of the Broncos and skidded away. And Kansas City maintains possession. Detron Smith, number 42 for the Broncos. It was laying on the ground. Nobody around him. It looks like he falls on it, but he missed it. Do you remember when we did the playoff game? Here it comes now. And, and look at the, the hit is just... Diedrich Dodds makes the tackle, forces the fumble. Now here's what you're talking about, Phil, with that ball. It's just laying there on the ground. And Smith, number 42, goes to go for it, and it comes out of his hands. He slips. But remember last year in the playoff game against Jacksonville when they said there were balls on the ground and we didn't get them? Right. Good and point. Today, there, there have been balls on the ground. You've got to get the balls that are on the ground. Would have been Denver's ball at the 27, but give credit to Vanover. He fumbles the ball, but he didn't give up. He really battled to get to that ball and recover the mistake. Anthony Lynn for the Broncos is the one to hit Vanover from behind and cause the fumble. And on first down, very little there, and another fumble recovered by Kansas City. As Anders coughed it up. Well, this would be a good time for Kansas City. The one thing they've got to do, one of the reasons why they're playing Elvis Gerback is you want to throw the ball down the field. Pressure on Gerback, steps away from Alfred Williams, scrambles, hooks to the sidelines and stops the clock out of bounds at the 30 with 123 left. And now with know. third down coming up and stopping the clock there, if they don't make first down, Denver has a couple of timeouts left. They could get a shot before the half. Oh, uh, no question, Nick. If I was Elvis Gerback in this situation, you always got to pay attention to this clock. It's uh, right here. Once it gets forced out of the pocket, Alfred Williams puts the pressure. If they're not open down the field, you're going to run. Stay in bounds. Plenty of time for your offense if you stay in bounds with your timeout, whatever, to, to move the ball down the field. Gerback is seven for eight passing. The throw. Incomplete. 
Beasley through the hands of Andre Risen at the 40. And now with a minute 20 seconds left in the half, Denver's going to get the ball on the punt with two timeouts remaining. Boy, Denver that time came with Atwater and Braxton. They had the blitz coming with the defensive backs. This ball is out in front of Andre Risen. We said before, he has got to make the big play. Now, that was a tough catch, but he has to make it. And he was being led on the dead run. Has, if he did pull that in, he had the only one man to beat. Gordon back at the 30, Aguiar to punt. Good kick. Gordon drifts to the 24. 30. 40. 50. And all the way to the Kansas City 40-yard line, Louis Aguiar made the tackle. Darian Gordon, who returned three punts for touchdowns this year, 36 on that take back. You've got an injured Bronco down on the field, but I'll tell you what, they got some excellent blocks on that thing. I don't know if, if that's Ray Crockett or Howard Griffith. There's a nine involved, and Aguiar as the punter. Right? That's what his, his job is. His job is not to really make the tackle. His job is to hold things up until he gets some help, but he also made the tackle. A number of the uh, injured Bronco, you can see the nine, but uh, don't want to guess. It's it Ray, is, Crockett. Ray Crockett. I mean, he made it. He came back and made an excellent block. Crockett, though, the starting quarterback and a valuable performer in that deep secondary for Denver, also used on special teams. Appears to be shaken, but okay. All right, here comes Crockett coming back to make the block. You see, boom, they went shoulder to shoulder, head to head. Tony Richardson, a big fullback for Manny Block. Here it is right there. Yeah, they, they just looked like they hit shoulder to shoulder. Crockett's up. He's he's running off the field, so he's all right. Well, that would be big because Denver's defense, it's built around the fact that their corners can stand out there and play man coverage and let everybody else get in there and try to stop the running game. Last two minutes, and they charge Denver with a timeout because of that injury. And so now the Broncos with one timeout left. That way, with that way, usually you don't even need any. 107 left in the half, 7 0 Broncos. A big defensive challenge here for Kansas City. Ed McCaffrey waving, saying, I, either I'm wide open or don't snap the ball. <laughs> Timeout, Chiefs. <laughs> Ed McCaffrey waving wildly at John Elway. I'm over here. We'll be right back. I mean, he's going to yell to John Elway. Look, I'm wide open. What causes the problem? That's Terrell Davis at the top of the screen. The Kansas City defense couldn't figure out who was split out wide, who to line up where, so they have to call the timeout. Well, first down from the Chiefs, 40 for Elway in the shotgun. Full house blitz in the shovel pass to Rod Smith, the wide receiver. And it's good for three. Well, you see, you have time to do that. You've got a minute and four seconds, Phil. You got, you're either going to run the ball up in the middle, take the run, or a little shovel pass, which is a very safe play because if it's dropped, it's just an incompleted pass. And, but you got a chance of popping it. That's good deception. It looked like Rod Smith was going to come back inside, help John Elway maybe protect, but it's a shovel pass. They probably got that off the film from the Pittsburgh Steelers. They mark it at the 38, second and eight. Clock running. One timeout left Denver. Again the blitz. Elway. Hit from behind. Does it roll the fumble? Yes. And Kansas City has recovered at the 36-yard line. Elway hit from the blind side. John Browning, it appeared, with a tackle. Definitely John Elway takes too long to decide where to throw the football. A blitz by Kansas City. Picked up. Anthony Davis falls on the loose ball, and Kansas City, after giving Denver an opportunity with a 7-0 lead, takes the ball back. Browning hits John Elway from behind. You know, so you're absolutely right. He had all day to all throw day. the ball, and he just waited too long. This, if you're going to cause the fumble, I mean, call, blame it on somebody. It's on Elway. He just waited too long. Terrell Davis stepped up. He got a block. Everybody picked up a man that was blitzing. He had time. 22 seconds left in the half, and Gerbach sends three to the left. Goes left underneath. Complete to Damon Hughes, his first catch. And there's the final timeout 
spent by Kansas City. 13 seconds on the clock. Coming up at the half, the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC halftime report. Greg Gumbel and company with the first half analysis of the action here in Kansas City. And we'll also talk with Cordell Stewart of the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's all coming up at halftime. He scored one, the only touchdown in that game yesterday. One of the lowest scoring in NFL playoff history, seven and six. And here's seven and zero approaching the final seconds of the half. Would you like what Bill Cowher said after the game? I made a mistake. It was my fault. Don't ask me about it. Well, anytime <laughs> they don't work, it's the coach's fault. That's, right. I mean, that's why you're the coach. you got to take the blame if uh, Bubba Sneak from the one-yard line doesn't work. But right here, we almost saw this situation at the end of the game, end of the game about six weeks ago. If the Broncos make Kansas City throw the ball inside, there might not be time for Kansas City to run up and stop the clock to try a field goal. Well, they're trying to get Andre Risen all by himself up on the top side. Burback throws in the flat, complete, but for only a yard gain to Popson, the tight end. That up leaves eight seconds on the clock. Well, that's because to Anavasa. Well, that's right. Pressure on the quarterback. Couldn't look down the field. They kept him from getting outside, and they took away the receivers outside and short for Kansas City's offense. Well, the key moment in this game, Stoyanovich made a field goal from 34. Kansas City penalty tried from 44 and hit the upright. And then on that possession, Denver took it down for their touchdown. Terrell Davis a yard out. Randy Hilliard does Denver's down on the goal line as Gurbach is stripped from behind, picked up by one of his linemen. It's Glenn Parker, and that's how the first half will end. Neil Smith took it right out of the hands of quarterback Elvis Gerbach. Well, Neil Smith just keeps coming and coming and coming. Neil Smith is blocked to the outside. Watch this. He knows there's only one play left. I've got a chance. Watch this. He just reaches out and takes the ball out of Gerbach's hand. That ball is on the ground. That is a fumble. Second sack of the half for the former chief, Neil Smith, instrumental in the top-level defense displayed by the Denver Broncos. Here he comes. I mean, this is just hustle by Neil Smith. Watch this, Philly. Just hustle, hustle, hustle. Get his arm up and knock the ball out. Score at the half. Denver 7, Kansas City nothing. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel in our NFL on NBC halftime show in New York. After these messy four yards, and he was sacked three times. Marty was very emphatic about the fact that he wouldn't take Gerbach out. It would take a lot to take him out. Well, I mean, he is 9 of 11. The opportunities have not been there for him so far down the field, but we heard it at halftime. Joe Gibbs, Chris Collinsworth saying it very well. Kansas City on offense. The protection, I think, has been fairly good by the offensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs. Gerbach has time to throw it down the field. Chiefs get it first. You saw Gerbach on the sidelines trying to fire up his offensive teammates. Elam to kick it off. Van over at the one-yard line. He returned a kickoff and a punt for touchdown during the regular season. To the nine. Van over. And the former Florida State star tackled around the 30, and they're still wrestling. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Dick. I talked to Marty Schottenheimer. He is very upset with the pass protection. He said, Elvis Gerbach has no time in the three sacks. We must do a much better job of pass protection. He said, I can read your mind. Don't ask the next question. Elvis Gerbach will play the entire second half. Now, as for Mike Shanahan, he says he's very happy with everything that went on. He told his team at halftime, no mistakes, no penalties, no mental errors, and we will not have a problem. Dick? All right, Jim, you saw Mike Shanahan looking out at the officials. His player, Defron Smith, came out of that scramble with the ball, but it had been whistled dead. So Kansas City starts at the 30 in the first half. 23 plays, only 58 yards. That comes out to two and a half yards per play. And Weiler trailing 7 nothing. Play action, Gerbach. Andre Risen gets the tackle. He's to the 37 of Denver. Boy, those coaches think alike, just as Joe Gibbs indicated back in New York. Marty Schottenheimer calls the play down the middle. Well, what, what happens is it's a play-action fake. Everybody goes for it on the Denver defense. They